making a Japanese recipe chicken in one pot and um, what I'm going to be doing right now is I'm going to be I'm going to be placing the cut up chicken in a colander and pouring boiling water over it to remove odor. First time I've made this, uh, I'm going to, even though the recipe doesn't say to take the skins off, I'm going to take the skins off because I'm on a bit of a diet. <laughs> I'm going to be cooking the soup in this, but I'm just going to go ahead and boil some water in here and then I'm going to uh, pour it over the chicken in that sink. So let me get the chicken over there. Okay, the water is boiling and I'm just going to pour it over the chicken over here. I took most of the uh, fat off, but I left a little bit on because I think the fat gives it some nice flavor. Um, hold on. Okay, so it's in here. Let's go ahead and pour some boiling water over this. The purpose for this is apparently to remove chicken odor. I've never made this recipe before, so I'll just do what the recipe says. <laughs> I don't know why this would make a difference, but the recipe says to do this, so, okay. Um, so I did that, and now we're going to go ahead and cut up some knob cabbage. I washed all the cabbage, and I, it says now to cut it into two inch widths. Um, yeah, it looks like it's a... What I'm going to do is kind of inspect it. I washed it all this, and it has to be about one and a quarter pounds. So this looks like it's about right. Let me go ahead and cut this part off. Yep, one and a quarter pound. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this into uh, two inch widths and get it ready for the, the soup. <laughs> yep. Okay, yeah, I'm cutting it into two inch widths approximately. I'm not going to be able to follow the recipe completely because uh, I'm going to have to use frozen. Hmm, I think I'm going to take that off. Yeah, I got this uh, Napa cabbage at the Asian grocery store. Because where I live, this is hard to get, at least at my Kroger. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and cut up the rest of the cabbage. Right, I cut the cabbage up. You can see it right over there. Now I'm going to cut the tofu into one inch cubes. And put it in here. It's about one inch. So let's go ahead and work on that. There's the tofu. One inch cubes. Okay, the next thing I have to do, it says to wipe the kombu kelp dry. I actually have dry kombu. Yeah, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to stick the kombu in the bottom. It's going to stick it in the bottom. It needs to be a ten, a four inch square kombu kelp. So I'm going to get that. Oops. Goodness. This is dried kombu. That's about a four inch square. <laughs> this, I have old kombu and I need to use it anyway. That's kelp seaweed. Now we're just going to go ahead and throw in the chicken on top of it. Put the chicken on top of the kombu or the kelp and then I covered it with water and now I'm going to bring it to a boil. So the chicken's on top of the kelp and I've covered the whole thing with uh, so that the tops of the chickens are covered with water and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Those are chicken thighs by the way. It's about a little over a pound of chicken thighs. Wait, actually, yeah, it's two pounds, I think, or like two and a half pounds. Whatever the recipe called for, I'll have the recipe at my website. I'm going to be making some ponzu sauce. That's a dipping sauce where I'll be dipping all these pieces in the soup after it's done. So it'll be half cup of light colored soy sauce. I'm just going to be using light soy sauce with... Um, Rice vinegar, you can also use lemon juice. I don't have any lemon juice, so I'll use rice vinegar. Yeah, you know. Half cup, I think I'm going to, uh, I might make it a fourth of a cup. Why, because I don't think I want to make that much. Might even make it. 
you know what? I'm going to kind of like do an eighth of a cup. Yeah, I'm going to kind of fourth the recipe. Eighth of a cup. Yeah. And then another eighth of a cup. Basically, it's a 50-50 ratio, half-half. So, you know, I don't need to make that much ponzu sauce. Okay, so let's go up to a fourth cup here. That's good enough for me. <laughs> yep, that'll be my dipping sauce. The recipe is obviously meant to make large quantities because, you know, for people that eat, use it all the time. So I'm just going to stick it right in here. Yeah. Mmm, tastes Japanese, all right. <laughs> or Chinese. This isn't really Japanese soy sauce. This is Chinese soy sauce, my mother says. She only considers Kiko men Japanese, but that'll work for now. So. The recipe says to, I'm going to turn the heat off, Tess says to lift out the kombu and remove the scum. You know what? I kind of like kombu. I think I'm going to leave it in there, but I am going to remove the scum, though. Okay, so what I'm doing is removing the scum. I'm just kind of like going like this, stick it in here. So I'll be doing this until I get most of it out. So that's the scum, you see. So here's what it looks like right now. I'm going to leave the kombu in there. I happen to like kombu. I can see why they say to leave, take it out, though. Well, it's because, you know... What I'm going to do is cut it up and dip it in the ponzu sauce. <laughs> the recipe says to add one-third cup sake. Um, I could get sake at the Asian store, but I'm finding that sherry cooking wine works pretty good. So that's what I use. So let's do one-third cup sherry cooking wine. Throw that in there. And now I need to boil it for 40 minutes. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's turn the heat back on. I'm going to boil it for 40 minutes, and then I'll be back. I actually reduced the heat because I just have good cooking common sense, so I reduced the heat, and I'll be boiling it for 40 minutes. I'm going to do something that the recipe didn't call for, but while it's cooking, I'm going to be cutting the, the uh, chicken into bite-sized pieces. <laughs> because I know uh, that it'll make it easier to eat. So... Um, yeah, I'm kind of like going to go in here and take some of the chicken off. Ah. Yeah. Let's take it. Yes. And I might break up some of the, uh, looks like I might need to cook it a little bit more. These are probably um, genetically engineered birds, so they, they weren't real birds for anybody who's worried about killing animals. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to make that out. All the birds are dead. So this, that's why the bird meat has been rather dry. You know what? I'm gonna, I just changed my mind. I'll do it after it comes out. It's kind of hard to do this. The recipe didn't say to do this anyway. The next thing I want to do is add the remaining ingredients and then simmer until vegetables are tender. So, this is going to be like a nice stew. Actually, it looks like I've got a, probably way too much cabbage. I might be able to use this cabbage, save this cabbage for another recipe. I think I cut too much. Yeah, I think I'm going to save this and uh, put it in another bag, because this looks like way too much. And I'm going to use it for um, Joza. Yeah, that'll work. And then throw in this. Yeah, that's, I know, the right amount of tofu. I think I have a little bit too much cabbage in there. Let me just go ahead and see how much of this is going to shrink down. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, the Napa cabbage, I'm going to use that for another recipe. I can, there are other recipes I can use that for, so I'm going to save that. This is about right. So here's what I'm doing right now. Oops. Yeah, I've got that much in there. I got so I'm just going to go ahead and continue to cook it until the vegetables are tender. It doesn't it doesn't say to cover it, but I'm going to do it anyway because I think it'll help it to cook more. Okay, here's what it looks like. It looks really good. My computer's fan is kind of weak, so I think I'm going to end this cooking video right here. Um if I post it, it means it's good. Uh, you dip it in the ponzu sauce, and I'll have the recipe at my website. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and um, end it right here. So that's what it looks like. Um, yeah, because right now my computer, the fan is weak, so I don't want to be using my webcam for the final version. So let me just go ahead and end it here. I just want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters for all of their support and we have a great time hanging out every Friday night and we are all going to focus on meditating, living in the moment, and enjoying our lives and we'll just have great fun Friday nights focusing on that.